This is the Insomniacs Anonymous Podcast, now offering hot dogs for when you just need a wiener. Today on the podcast, we talk about the Halloween events that took place in Guild Wars 2 and Overwatch, we recap some of the events following the Sombra ARG, and Red Dead Redemption 2 is coming soon. Persona 5's English voice cast was announced, featuring the talents of Xander Mobus and Matt Mercer. The Nintendo Switch is announced, and the indie game Night in the Woods release date has also been announced. Stick around, the announcements are just about to announce themselves. Announcements. Hello and welcome to the Insomniac Economics Podcast. It is November 11th, and I am shooting his cat with a pop tag in my mouth. November 11th? November 11th? November's the 11th month of the year. That's what I meant. It's oh. pretty cool when I say it that way, right? No. So the 11th <laughs> month of the year, it's the first of that month, actually. Okay. And now there's no more Pop-Tart in my mouth. Sure, actually, that, that a little was Pop-Tart. Bit. Sure. And uh, now that I crawl back from under the table, I'm also joined here by Dude Run, who's being mean to me. Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, it's uh, November the 1st, um, one day after Halloween, and there's lots of Halloween goodness to talk about, some pre-Halloween goodness, and some post-Halloween depression, and yeah. I, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, uh, yeah, that, that happened too, but yeah, I know. Um, I, I was more talking about the fact that, you know, nobody knows entirely when the Guild Wars 2 Halloween stuff is going to go away, and I have lots of bat wings to, to grind for, and uh-huh. they may disappear in like an hour, if they haven't already. I should actually try to load the launcher and see what happens. Also, the Overwatch of Halloween events ending Fuck, today, it's already too. already gone. The launcher yeah, is updating. Damn it. We here at IA just found out that the Guild Wars 2 Halloween events are still going on right now. So if you happen to be listening on the 2nd of November, which is probably when this goes up, or the 3rd, I don't know, uh, you have about a few days left to try it out, so get on the Guild Wars and play and stuff. I guess the uh, Overwatch stuff is still going on for now? It's gonna end later today, but like, it's and gotcha. it's still going on for now, so... See, in here I think, like, Winter's Day, didn't that shit go all the way into, like, December? Or, I mean, January or something? I have no idea. Probably? I don't know. So, yeah, fair warning, if you, uh, if you, uh, like Guild Wars 2, then, you know, you, your up- launcher is updating, you should go update that shit. My microphone wigged out because my internet connection is shit, and I can't download and record podcasts at the same time. You should get, well, I guess you're kind of stuck with that, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. I actually tried to upgrade it, and I don't remember if I ranted about this once before, but basically I tried to upgrade it. I improved the the television that we already have, like rece- like channels and whatnot. I, was, I got us uh, into the new beta program that got us cable boxes that were um, not only DVRs, which, yeah, we have one of those at the time, but we were going to get a second one from them. And it was going to be like 10 times more storage and more powerful and faster and all that kind of stuff. And then it was going to improve the internet speeds to have like five times better upload speed and like twice as good download speed or something like that. Um, and it was going to cost us like five, maybe $10 more than what we already were paying. And it was going to take care of a few other problems that we had, which is why I called in the first place. My mom hated this idea called them back, told them to cancel that, and decided that she was going to uh, replace the broken cable box that we had, give them back our third cable box that we don't really use anymore because it's in a basement TV that doesn't really ever get turned on anymore. And we were going to simply get a replacement cable box DVR of the old variety um, for the second box and then nothing else changed and i think our price still went up by like five dollars because cable companies yay yay so i was rubbing nipples jeff yeah pretty much yeah rubbing nipples and and shro sat in the corner and cried and rocked back and forth shaking his head like why did you do this pop tart break 
Yay. So how have you been, Shro, while you're eating that Pop-Tart? That's great. Wait, what? <laughs> um, so, I mean, there's been a lot going on. We, uh, we had a lot of technical difficulties last week, for anybody wondering. Um, yeah. So, you know, sometimes shit happens. Um, eventually, Shro will have you know, social media options to be able to put out there that like, hi, I, I broke stuff. We uh, we won't be releasing a podcast this week, but oh, nope, yeah. not this day. It is not this day. Get um, we do have a Twitter, and I forgot to update to that. I'm sorry. We do have a Twitter. Yes, we do have a Twitter. I don't even know this. <laughs> I've I've told you this. I thought that was your Twitter. It is a Twitter that I run, but it is my it is the IA Twitter. Well, news to me. <laughs> All right, Today, IA has a Twitter. Four of the Insomniacs Anonymous podcast. The leader of Insomniacs Anonymous realizes we have more social media than he thought he did. <laughs> Would you like control of this Twitter, Shro? Not right now. I don't. I don't okay, need a fine. kind of businessy Twitter to be the first Twitter I have control of. Okay, fine, whatever. I call it twatter, okay? Eh. Granted, maybe that would be amusing and fitting of IA style, but I don't yeah. know. More twooter. Twooter is funnier sounding. Yeah. Twatter, twatter does roll off the more tongue aggressive. more, though. Takes less effort to say. Uh, anyway, so what are we talking about today there, Shro? There's a lot of fucking shit to talk about. This is what happens yeah, when there's things that act. I mean, holiday season, so we've you know, you know, shit's starting to hit the fan real hard. Um, in fact, we kind of touched that last time with Night in the Woods. Um, there is a lot more cool stuff about Night in the Woods, by the way, but we'll get there. Um, we've been playing a lot of games. There's a lot of new updates going on, a lot of teasers, releases. Um, so let's start with what we uh, already kind of mentioned, the Halloween stuff. I know Guild Wars did Halloween. You mentioned Overwatch this Halloween. Let's uh let's talk Overwatch for a little bit. Alrighty. Well, pretty much we had a new brawl mode, which is a temporary game mode, usually just changing out certain aspects of the game, like hero balancing, heroes you're allowed to play, all sorts of stuff like back end things in the game. But for yeah. the Halloween event, we had Junkenstein's Revenge, which was a Left for Dead 2, like, tower defense kind of thing. You sit in front of a castle, defend a door with uh, with up to four people, and you just kill robots that happen to come your way. And the occasional right. uh, player, and the occasional NPC bot-controlled person. It cool. was fun. It, was, it even had its own little lore about, like, vampire hunting and mercenaries and stuff. It was kind of oh, cool. God. Now, you said temporary. Is that temporary because of the Halloween event, or...? Temporary because of the Halloween event, yeah. Okay. They change it out every so often, or... Every well, I know there's, patch. like, all the PTR beta nonsense. I wasn't sure if that was part of it. I don't know. That's another... That's another, like, whole ball game. But they also had yeah. loot boxes that contained special skins and sprays and taunts and all sorts of other stuff and that was some pretty cool stuff. It still bothers me that you can't use custom skins or I mean sprays yeah. in that game. But I mean, like, it's not that's the hallmark of first person shooters, the right? The hallmark of Valve first person shooters at least. I've not really played any others to confirm that. Not so much anymore. They fucked it up in CSGO too. How'd they do that? Basically it's like Overwatch now. You you earn sprays and you can't upload custom ones anymore unless it's like a Jerry Rigged server that allows you to do it. Well, considering most people have trolled it to post porn gifs, it makes sense. But that's a staple. It does they don't want it. They're M rated games anyways. They probably didn't want it. Well, I guess you could mm. just say, like, online interactions aren't rated by the ESRB, and they can't be rated by the ESRB, much. because that's That's, that's pretty much why they, they, yeah. that, that particular caveat exists. Well, I guess people because may have complained too somewhere on the internet, much. somebody's going to call you a cunt, and somebody else is going to post you a picture of one. Yeah. It's, it's really, you know, how it works. 
And someone's going to s- again going back to the I do not coddle anybody on the internet. And if you're not old enough and you don't know enough, you shouldn't be on the fucking internet. But that was a discussion we had off in the Discord. Yeah, that's really all that happened for the Halloween event. There were some map changes, some very like cosmetic stuff. Uh, Hollywood had a really nice update. Everything was all nighty, nighttime, and there are jack o' lanterns and hay bales and stuff. Oh, and gravestones. A lot of gravestones. That was about it. I ended up getting two skins and a bunch of, like, post-round uh, victory poses. And right now I'm just saving up my credits for Sombra. Whenever she comes out, I don't know. Do you actually have to purchase her or something? No, but you can purchase skins and all that stuff for her with credits gotcha. that you get from loot boxes. So how does that is like the credits you earn from a loot box allows you to buy more loot boxes or is there like an in-game store or uh you can buy loot boxes for real money but you can't buy credits for real money. And you can't buy right. loot crates for credits. You can buy So do you buy like keys and... or just skins nope, or it's okay. just a box there's no keys. You can buy individual things for a character with credits. So if you get a duplicate of a skin or something like that, you get a credit. You get credits for it, and then you can gotcha. turn those credits in for skins. Well, we mentioned beta stuff in PTR. What are what are they changing in PTR? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, Hold on, never mind. Let's move to a to- different topic because yeah. you just you know no. I'm well, Go ahead. I have to like pull up a web page because there's a lot of hero balancing stuff they're playing with, and it looks like they're. Ooh nerfing ultimates oh yes question mark question mark exclamation point um they're nerfing ultimate costs as in increasing the time it takes for you to get your alt for every hero ever they're also uh changing it so anytime you deal damage to a non-player so like a turret or a teleporter or something you don't charge your ultimate from that so it again takes longer to charge your ultimate. Hmm. Shall I go down the list of the rest of these, or do we want to move on? Because there's a lot. I mean, that's up to you. This is your ball game. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Let's see, the, these are not like final changes to the live game. This is all like the playtest client. So expect these to be changed at a later date. But be look be on the lookout for change for anything that goes live. For D.Va, her mech health is increased to 200, as it was formerly 100, and her armor remains at 400, so she has more health. About 600 total. That's kind of it's kind of overpowered there. She's a little buffed. And her movement speed while firing has been increased by 25%. And there's another one. They've reduced the cost of her ultimate call mech back down to what it was before the global ultimate cost change. So her call mech ultimate has not changed its cost. And it just sounds like she gets like a, a head start if she destroys her mech. Yeah, she does. If she destroys her Fair mech uh, on purpose, like blows it up, she can call that back immediately after killing something. Damn. So yeah, it's a little overpowered. But uh... For Soldier Suicide Sim- Divas incoming. Oh yeah, that that happens a lot. But uh, for Soldier 76, his pulse rifle has been buffed and nerfed. His bullet damage is increased to 20 per shot. And maximum bullet spread increased from 2.2 to 2.4. I don't know what that's relevant to. So the spread's increased, but so is the damage. On his oh, nano boost... Have to- sorry... Oh, no, I was saying, I I don't think you'd have to go into, like, the hard numbers if you don't want to. Well, I'll just, I'm just reading the patch note, and that's what it says. So. Fair enough. Uh, Ana's nano boost no longer increases move speed, and that kind of bums me out a little bit. I've not had the chance to be a giant hammer-wielding superhuman that goes fast and smashes shit in the face, but that sounds like a fun thing to do. I also don't think the movement speed really af- really is a problem. So I don't know if that'll be permanent. Anyway, May's ultimate, the Blizzard, has an increased ultimate cost, so she's feeling 
a lot of that pain from the ultimate cost nerf. Lucio's Amp It Up has decreased healing. Oh boy, that might not be good in the long run. Zarya's Particle Barrier and Projected Barrier. Uh, the power gained from somebody shooting those barriers has decreased, so she's going to get a little weaker when she shoots a barrier at people and they start firing at her. Uh, Torbjorn now generates scrap automatically over time, but the amount of scrap collected from a fallen enemy has decreased by 40%. And his hammer swing speed has increased, but his damage for that has decreased. And now we have Widowmaker. Her Venom Mine no longer damages her. But, and Widow's Kiss, I think that's the scope, the scope in thing. Her rifle, I mean. Her, the charge rate for that has increased by 20%, so she's definitely been buffed. And far as rocket launcher, the minimum damage explo minimum explosion damage has increased to 25% of rocket's total damage, formerly 12%. And the minimum explosion knockback has decreased to 0% of Rocket's total knockback, which was formerly 75%. And Mercy's passive health regeneration now kicks in when Mercy avoids taking damage for 1 second, as opposed to 3 seconds what it used to be. Uh, I don't know how that'll work. Only so one we... way to find out. Yep, time to play the PTR, but not now. We're doing a thing. Podcast over, playing PTR. <laughs> <laughs> yep. We're back buying Shro Overwatch. Yes, so please. you can join me. Someone buy Shro Overwatch for me, please. Brian was actually talking to me the other day. He's like, uh, so when you buy an Overwatch, and I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like it. It's really fun. It's probably more balanced than TF2 is right now. Well, it sounds like that's not going to stay changing. <laughs> yeah, they're... Well, they're playing around with balancing stuff. I'm just giving you shit. I, I know. <laughs> but for people that actually take that seriously, I want to cover the base. No. Yes. No. Yes, there are people that would probably think it's an unbalanced piece of shit. I'm sure there are people that think it's an unbalanced piece of shit that should die on a fire with pain and suffering and maybe a spit bucket. Why the spit bucket? I don't know. It's just what popped into my head as I was running my mouth. Well, alrighty then. I don't question these things. So where are we in this list? Uh, we were talking about some of the Overwatch stuff, but I don't mind like splitting it up. So, so you want to go back to it then? Eh, let's split it up a bit. Have some variety. Fair enough. You can always just get the clip notes too if you want. Um, well, we can talk about Halloween and uh, Guild Wars 2. Uh, that started on, I believe, the 18th of October, um, which ironically is when the last podcast was recorded, and I was super excited about this day because I had actually ran into Gail Gray in person, well, in game, um, and me and many members of TLC were hanging out with Gail Gray and talking to her. And she invited us to join the festivities in Lion's Arch on Tuesday, the 18th, for a, quote, developers meeting, which is really actually just all the devs being there to launch the Halloween update. Um, and I don't remember what happened that day, but we recorded the podcast. I did a few other things, and then I, I think I actually went to one of my buddy's house to work on his car or something. Uh, yeah, but I, I got home and realized at, like, midnight that, oh, shit, today was the day that there was that meeting. And I'd even posted about it on uh, Discord and the forums and stuff, and I still totally forgot. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, I did, too. But... So, but, um, so, yeah, that launched on the 18th. Um, they didn't really do much different uh, than previous years. And I'm actually okay with that, uh, but every year, or every holiday, it seems to be a big piss and moaning match for everybody, like, oh my god, they didn't do anything different this year. This is the, like, third year that we've had to deal with the same shit in Lion's Arch, and there's nothing else, and oh my god, what are these fucking devs doing? And 
I'm like I'm working I, on the next expansion, you fucking noobs. And maybe they don't want to work on anything else for Halloween. Maybe it's fine the way it is. I was gonna say that okay. uh, the holidays are actually pretty good. You get, yeah. you know, a lot of good stuff with it. Um, and if you don't feel like playing it, you don't have to. Exactly. It's not forced on you. And I'm trying to think of other games of this type that have year-to-year changing holidays, and I can't. I mean, even WoW, I think, has had the same Halloween event for, like, ten years. Probably, yeah. Um, I mean, I so, I don't know where everybody's getting this uh, I need new holiday thing. Especially when you think about it. Holiday, by definition. Annual recurrence of celebrating the same thing. So oh, at the start change? of Guild Wars, they had, like... They did change some stuff. Like, we didn't have Mad Prince Thorn or whatever. Bloody Prince Thorn. We had the Mad King, and that was it. And then he comes... Right, they've the added Prince some things, yeah. but... Maybe we don't have to expect some new content every year, but maybe once in a while? That would be nice, but you shouldn't expect it every year. Yeah, I don't know. Would it certainly uh, make Guild Wars 2 more interesting... Than other options, yeah, I agree it would, but I don't know. I don't think it's a. It's not a requirement. Yeah, something that we need to be bitchy about. But um, so Halloween was good. It did apparently just end as I pulled up the launcher, and it's already updating. So that's kind of a shame because I wanted to go grind a few more things. Now I'm gonna have to actually buy them. Fuck. Um, but some new events. Uh. A, Shro has discovered the nightmarish world of scribing. Fuck that. Oh, yeah. And, um, so, I do has, does have some new scribe things. Um, I'm already level 202 of 400, so halfway there. Yay. Oh, wow, dude. What the fuck? Um, what? It wasn't That's, that bad. That seems like you made a lot of progress in I don't know how much time. A couple days. Shit, dude. I didn't know it was that easy. Mm. You gotta remember, I have every crafting discipline. I'm kind of used to oh. staring at those screens. <laughs> oh, okay then. I think the only one that my main character doesn't have is jeweling. And is that a word? Jeweling? Jewel crafting? Jewelry? Or, it, the real term is jeweler. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm jeweling. That sounds like a sexual term. Sounds I don't know. like you're dueling somebody. Or making a really anti-Semitic racist joke. <laughs> yeah. Fucking jewelers. <laughs> um, but yeah, because of that, I've also learned fuck flax. Fuck flax. Just fuck oh. it so hard. <laughs> oh, that was an F. Oh, fucking hell. I did not hear the F. <laughs> fuck lax? Mm. Like a laxative? <laughs> Sure, let's go with that. All right. Brought to you by Insomniacs Anonymous, the brand new fucklax for those of you that like to get extra messy during anal. <laughs> oh God. Well, that reminded me of a story Worley once told me. Oh, oh God. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll save that for that another off night. Into the NC seventeen category. Yeah. Because God knows that can't be tame. Nope. It really isn't. I know Whirly wants to be uh, have a guest appearance at some point. Maybe we'll make her tell that story herself. Oh, I would I would love that. I'm sure she would love that too. But um I hope she would cuz that's that's <laughs> hilarious. Anyways, yeah, fuck flax. <laughs> flax. Flax. F L A X. SpongeBob episodes. Flax. <laughs> Flex, flex. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, um, yeah. The fact that you need twenty of those things for a single item that is like, hey, you need this item for pretty much every piece of scribing material. And by the way, your guild hall also needs it in mass quantities, just because. Yeah. So, on the other hand, that has also made it really easy for me to determine that I have like seven events plant for IA right now and 
One of them is guild farming run, where we just kind of take it easy and we go kill mobs and get all the flax and the whatever other things we can mine and harvest and whatnot. And just what we can keep, we keep. And if we can, we can donate stuff to Guild Hall and we can get that shit done so much faster. So right. I think that'll be fun. It'll, we'll we'll do silly shit as we do that. But uh, also, Mystic Toilet's... <laughs> Mystic Toilet Siege books that now are 10 time multipliers. You now, you, if you wanted to make superior siege equipment, you either had to buy it or you, I think there's ways to now craft it through the guild hall stuff, but I haven't gotten there yet. So we'll back out of that one. But the old way that I know is you had to combine um, the basic siege equipment, uh, two materials, and um, what was called a siege master's guide. And depending on the siege that you were trying to upgrade, you sometimes had to use multiple siege master guides. And you had to do this one at a time for each upgrade you wanted to make in the mystic toilet, which meant you had to, you know, click and drag or double click four different items in your inventory, hit yes, and then you'd have to do that again each time. So for those of us that are in World versus World or Commanders, and we burn, you know, a couple dozen Siege Blueprints a night, yeah, that got real tiresome real quick. Yikes. There are reasons that a lot of us just bought it outright because it's a lot easier to sit there and choke on gold. Then and have to go through the guild or the buy window for the trading post, then have to sit there for literally half an hour at the Mystic Toilet grinding materials. Um, so now that's gone because there are now three levels of the Siege Master um, book. Uh, there's the Siege Novice, Siege Master, and Siege Grandmaster books and you can even buy them in packs of 10 with one button from Miani the uh, Mystic Toilet attendant uh, by the way Mystic Toilet is the Mystic Forge for those of you that are uninitiated it's a way to combine specialty ingredients to get new things um, it's got an RNG Jesus factor that you can also um, combine random shit in there so that's why you call it a toilet, because then you just dump all your shit in there, all your useless shit, and then get something that might be good. Hence the R and Jesus factor. Yeah. So, so yeah, quality of life improvements for world versus world people. That's one of the big ones that I, I saw recently. Um, also, we've got cannons? Question mark? Um, it's yeah. one of the new things that was recently in a poll, a poll that I, um, I don't actually remember how I voted on in that poll. But, um, so cannons have been a staple of keeps for a long time. Uh, they are very powerful. Um, they kind, a lot of siege kind of takes on the, uh, skill abilities of the person operating it. So if you're like a condition heavy thief or necro, uh, your shots do some extra condi damage kind of thing. Um, not really super versed in that, but point is, is cannons are awesome and powerful because with the right person on them, they can like one shot people. Um, they also destroy siege really quickly. Well, now we have deployable cannons because those were things like mortars that you normally could only deploy from a pre-constructed spot on a keep. And now there is a blueprint for cannons that you can deploy in the field anywhere you want. They're less powerful and have less health, but, you know, they can still be doing cannon things. Um, so we've been playing with that. Whether or not to keep the cannons was the poll question. I do know that during Guild Mission Night for TLC, we decided that we, uh, we need to keep and hold a camp for the mission. And we decided to do so by siege capping the camp with cannons. Oh, wow. Siege capping, meaning the game says, no, you're not allowed to place any more siege here, you siege humping asshole. <laughs> it's basically because the X-Men sucks. Um, but 
it's actually not that, but still. But yeah, so cannons are around, and they're kind of silly. They're not actually getting overly used, which is a good thing, because they're not, you know, being game-breaking. Hmm. Um, it's kind of how I felt about repair hammers, which I think were voted out of oblivion, or into oblivion. Uh, repair hammers weren't really used all that much, but they were a thing, and they would allow you to repair pre-existing siege rather than having to rebuild new ones from scratch. Oh, so, yeah, that was broken. Um, well, I mean, it would still use supply to do it. Oh, okay. So, and it was, I, as far as I understood, I never even really got to use it. I bought a few, but never ended up using them. Um, I'm pretty sure that once you used it, it was gone. You'd have to buy another one. So... But yeah, nobody was really using them. So I was actually not that upset about it because, in my opinion, yeah, sure, if you want to really pump a lot of supply into, you know, that arrow cart that you love and just like sticking your dick in the front of it, I mean, go for it because it just means the thing that you're trying to defend is burning supply faster. And that's really all our goal is, is to drain your ass of supply. <laughs> so, but uh, to wrap up the Guild Wars news, uh, there are now, there's now another poll, which actually is asking about what kind of new improvements, again, we want to make for World versus World. Again, the, a lot of the polls are World versus World focused, and... Basically, it reads that would you like us to focus on world versus world scoring improvements for phase two, quote unquote, which is their like development timeline, I guess. Um, and that's basically thinking like skirmish, how the new skirmish sh system works, um, where there's two hour blocks of time. And depending on what your team holds and kills, because you now get points per kill, um, based on how well your team does in that two-hour block called a skirmish, you can get anywhere between one to three points towards your total war score. That's hard to say. War score. <laughs> War um, score and seven years ago. I know, right? Fires so, nah, licked at our nations or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. But um, but yeah, that's the that's one of the options is to make improvements to that system, fine tune it, uh, make it a little easier to understand because the the window kind of just has a bunch of numbers at different sides of it. Then you're kind of like, what do these mean? They're not labeled. Um. And then the other one is to improve matchmaking, where they're going to actually do away with the Glico system. Completely gone. What is that, for those that don't know? Uh, Glico is actually from a way to score chess players, um, developed by a guy of the same name. The um, easiest way to explain this is that um, it normalizes your ability to improve your score or lose score based on who your opponent is playing and what their score is. So, if you face an opponent that is much higher in the score ranking than you, and they totally kick your ass because it's expected, because they're just supposed to be better than you based on their score, your score doesn't really get dinged that much. It's normalized against that, because you were expected to get your ass handed to you. On the other hand, if you kick their ass, then your score goes up by a lot, because holy shit, look at that guy, and their score goes down because everybody's like, haha, the new guy kicked your ass. <laughs> um. And likewise, it means that if you lose against similarly ranked uh, people, then 
you not much changes there's a few little discrepancies and degrees of variation but uh your scores kind of stay the same because it's expected with similar scores that the match could go either way that's glico in a nutshell and that's how every server um is matched up at this point and because world versus world is a three-way uh fight um you're separated in into tiers between 24 servers of every three so you end up with eight tiers in world versus world tier one tier two tier three where these servers kind of get gridlocked because of their glico scores where they're fighting the same groups over and over again because their scores don't change that much because they're fighting the same people over and over again so to try and move up a tier, or in some cases move down a tier, involve match after match after match, translated into weeks if not months, of effort to continually be beating the same guys that you are ranked similarly to by such a wide margin that you got more points for it because you did better than expected. And that leads to things like the craziness for the tier one push with the X band, uh, that has a lot more internal politics than we should go into right now. And it leads to then the other things where some servers intentionally just tanked and said, we're not playing this week so that their score went down by a lot. So they would bump down a tier. Uh, and not have to deal with bullshit anymore. So, but yeah, the Glico system stagnates after a while. And so the new idea is that they would um, replace it with a one up, one down system. If you won, you'd go up. If you lost, you'd go down um, based on the tier, uh, supposedly, is how it would work. So if you lost in your tier, then you'd go down to the next one. If you won, you'd go up to the next one. And if you, I guess, were the neutral guy, they don't really clearly spell it out, but I guess if you were the neutral guy, you stayed there. Um, so that would add a lot of variation because you could move up and down tiers really rapidly. So that would be interesting. But that's the new poll. And I don't know how much of this thread is left, but not so much of a poll, but the developers in charge of your inventory management and what is known as material storage i.e mostly crafting based things so your ores your various woods the you know leather jute um cotton wool and bloodstone and all the new ascended crap and all that um all that stuff that goes into the material storage section of your bank uh, that you can deposit into, they're looking for new things to add to that. So there's a thread about it. Uh, we can link it in the description. But uh, they're asking for suggestions for what to uh, put in the n new additional spots. Uh, a lot of the uh, suggestions are blade shards, finally. Um, reclaimed metal, almagated gemstone, jes um legendary insights vision crystals stuff like that so oh doubloons was another one so if you have spots in your inventory that are being taken up by a particular item that you keep just building up um go to that thread say hey this is what i want and go for it though they are specifically saying that like interim crafting things are not going to be added so the fact that i have a bajillion fucking scribing like ink blotting pouches bullshit or whatever it is I that are just taking up my inventory and they're account bound so I can't even put them in a guild bank or anything and yeah that sucks those apparently aren't allowed so I both love and hate this thread because <laughs> all the shit that I want to go away they're like yeah no fuck you and I'm like well fuck you too but there's other good stuff going on there so yeah, that's that's all the Guild Wars update that I have. That was a little more than I thought it would be.
Tell me what the hell's going on with the somber ARG. We'll go back to. Alrighty. Watch well, for a second. I was going to talk about uh, how the website A Moment in Crime finally reached 100% on its little self updating percentage bar thing. But that was last week, so now it's way past that, so that's old news. And upon that thing finishing 100%, uh, we got another. We got more of the ARG rather than a release of Sombra, and people were pissed. I was pissed. In fact, I almost gave up. But we were greeted with a message that translated to English said Transmission complete, finishing upload. Upload finished, unit Bastion E54 engaged which is the bastion of Overwatch that you get to play as. And for those that don't know, Bastion mm. is an Omnic who is among one of many. He's just one, the one we play as is just one of the For those of you that billions. don't know what that is, he's a giant robot. Yes, he's a big robot dude with a turret and a bird and a gun. Two guns, actually. Anyway, uh, and then we were given a version number, like... For over like an Overwatch patch version, so once we were given that, people went into the game as Bastion on Dorado. It was the Dorado map, and if Bastion stood in front of a Eldorado? specific terminal, you heard a sequence of beeps, and people translated that into Morse code, decoded that, and it gave us a website link. Lumerico.mx and Lumerico is the is this power company in the map Dorado where that's they're just kind of generating power for the place. Nothing shouldn't be too bad Gotta anyway. Have that electricity. Pretty much. But apparently some shit's going down with that place and it's being super shady. Because Sombra wants us to hack them. Apparently. And get dirt on them, and then like release that in dirt to the public, and then be all like, "Oh, hey, we're rebels now," or something. And Gotta generate that electricity for the NSA. Pretty much. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, we the we as in the game detectives or the Sombra ARG players or anyone just paying attention went to this website with a username and password kind of thing, logged in, read some Spanish emails, and, uh, yeah, found out. Didn't seem like anything was too out of place. Even I didn't notice anything. It was, like, too illegal or out of place, but I guess Sombra found something, because she was going to release dirt on the, on the CEO of this Lamerico Corporation today, and I don't know what's going on with that. Is currently the Lumerica site is down. I don't know if that means the Sombra attack has begun, or if Sombra did just, it. Yeah, pretty much. Or if uh, maybe Blizzard's just updating it to make it look like they're they're probably just updating it, and it's going to take some time. But yeah. There's a whole sequence of stuff that had to go on for that website. Uh, you could log into a couple different accounts. One was a one admin, one was the like a super admin, and you could also look at a panel showing like how the power gauges are for the city or whatever. Hmm. It's kind of neat, but I fully expect a map where the power goes out now. Oh, I hope if so. It doesn't happen. I'll be angry. That would be cool. I don't even play the game. <laughs> I'll still be mad. Right. I don't know why. But uh, fast forward to now, and we get a message translated to English saying, The moment has come. These emails expose the truth about Portero, who is the CEO of Lumerico. Initiated the revolt and have convinced people of Mexico to support our cause. Now is the time to strike. Convert its precious inauguration on November 1st to a large movement against it. I need you to do one thing. Get access to the email security <coughs> chief and seek some form of help in the attack. You may see her contacting Portero soon. I've changed her password, and then just provides the password. 
Uh, with the login credentials, before the website went down, we were taken to an admin panel, showing the gauges and stuff. Or rather, an account that could use the admin panel and stuff. And a command prompt window at the very bottom of the page. The command window didn't really do anything. Like, you could type to it and it'd just say, terminal disconnected or something. Mm. And that's the latest news I have other than the Lamerica site being down right now. So, people keep thinking that Sombra's coming out today. Other people are saying Sombra's going to be coming out around uh, BlizzCon, which is in a few days, I hear. But I'm going to not hold my breath and just say more ARG stuff today. That's pretty much it. All right. Oh, and uh, there was an art leak for Sombra. It is confirmed she does, in fact, look like Skrillex. Yeah. And it seems like her kit is a small Uzi, as was confirmed earlier at an earlier leak. Or, wait, did we talk about the Sombra leak last time? Uh, I think so. I remember something about a sniper rifle. Uh, close enough. Okay. But she also seems to have a set of gloves that allow her to hack something. I don't quite know what yet. It's a little... still too soon to tell. Maybe we'll see some gameplay of her later today, I hope. If not, definitely after BlizzCon or during BlizzCon. So keep your eyes peeled. I'll keep mine peeled, and we should be good. Speaking about new things, though, um, so Red Dead Redemption, yes, two. The sequel is confirmed. We're seeing trailers for it now on TV. Actually, oh, wow. um, unfortunately, I don't know much about Red Dead Redemption other than that it's a considerably good game. I guess it's considered one of the best video games of all time, quote unquote. Um, I take, uh, that to court because I'm a Deus Ex fan and that is the best game of all time. And no, you cannot convince me otherwise. I would also Red Dead is a, uh, not PC thing. Rockstar Games develops it. And just like GTA, uh, Red Dead has had a lot of trouble getting to PC properly. Uh, to my knowledge, I could be wrong about this, but Red Dead Redemption still doesn't actually exist truly on PC. And for what it's worth, one of the um, things to know about the Red Dead Redemption 2 is that a PC release has not been confirmed or even hinted at at all. So this could be a straight-to-console only kind of thing, but it should be going to at least the PS4 and the Xbox One. So that's a thing. Another question is the release date. Uh, even though we're already talking about it in 2016, it looks like it's going to be late 2017, fall-winter-ish area that this is actually going to come out. Despite that, uh, you know, your typical GameStop, Best Buy, etc. are already taking pre-orders. I get the impression from breeding that the developer, Rockstar, and all of them aren't actually even ready for pre-orders yet, but some retailers are trying to do it anyways? Question mark? And from the uh, trailer, uh, people have already pegged that the characters John, Dutch, and Bill are probably making a reappearance. And in such a way that the uh, Redemption 2 might actually be a prequel to the original game. The original game being Red Dead Redemption. Because I guess Red Dead Redemption is actually a sequel to something else called Red Dead Revolver. Mm. Which I didn't even know until I looked this up. I remember that so, being out first before Redemption. Right, never yeah. Played uh, one, so, so yeah, it goes Revolver, Redemption, and now Redemption 2. But Redemption 2 might be a prequel to Redemption, just to make things confusing. So, But that's what we know at the moment regarding Red Dead. Maybe, just maybe, we'll actually get um, we'll get Red Dead Redemption 1 on PC by the time 2 comes out on anything else. 
And then I can finally play it. Because I don't have an Xbox of any kind. Or a PS4. Or a PS or PlayStation of any kind. <laughs> but speaking of consoles, yes. Nintendo finally seems to be actually doing something. Yes, they do. The Ninten- This is old news because it's, like, it's a week old, but... Nintendo yeah, NX was ago, revealed but... to be called the Nintendo Switch. And a lot of people are making like dog photos of this console. It looks really nice. And I'm interested dog in the photos? concept. Dog photos. They're making the console look like a dog. You'll see, just look up Nintendo oh, Switch okay, dog. I could see that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. I got to look this up now. Okay. I'm actually super excited for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, It might be the first console I try to get in years. Because I haven't had a... I haven't gotten a new console since the GameCube. Wow. And I think I got my GameCube like a year after it came out. I got my Wii a little late, but... Yeah. I'm done to 3DS now. I would like to get the Switch. Only because it it interests me greatly how they're trying to... Brid, they're trying to make it, uh, make it a nice switch. It's, ha, yeah, fucking words. Whatever. They want, they made it so you can switch from co- couch console gaming to handheld gaming, and it looks interesting to me. I'm impressed with the idea that they have basically, cause the crazy thing that I remember when they talked about the NX before I think it even was known as the NX, was that it was going to be a console that basically was going to perform as well, if not better, than the newest Microsoft and Sony console derivatives, um, which appear to be the PlayStation Pro, and we're not entirely sure if Xbox truly has a X-Bone upgrade coming in the wings or not yet. Um, but the the trailers for Nintendo actually seem to be kind of heralding that a little bit because to get the high-definition graphics that they're claiming and displaying packaged into something that you can carry around as basically a thick tablet is pretty impressive because they have confirmed that the little docking station for the switch is really only a charger and a like hdmi port for your tv and the rest is all all the little done by that little portable device yeah so that's impressive my one concern is i feel like to run that well, but within that much of a confined spot, this little motherfucker is going to be hot as hell. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, yeah. I don't feel like it's going to be the one that you want to lay on your lap to play a game, so that could be interesting. Uh, but it does have its own little kickstand to keep it upright. It has a controller that actually is where you make the connection points, so you wouldn't actually be holding the device itself. You'd be holding it by the controller or sitting it on a table or something in front of you with the controller in your hand. And the fact that the controller can grab the device and itself to like change the size, I think, is also pretty damn cool. Oh, yeah. So, very interested to see how that works. I really do hope that the device has the power specs um, and hardware to really be competitive with the other two. And I definitely hope that it doesn't have any major setbacks like you know, possibly exploding. Looking at you, yeah, Galaxy Note that. 7. And that, you know, it has, like, decent battery life to make it a viable option and all that. Because it claims to be, and to really be able to pack it, because it, it teases at the idea that you could use it basically as a tablet, too. Like, just straight up browse the internet and do, you know, watch movies yeah. and do tablet things on it. And that would be super cool. But we actually don't know if it has a touch screen. Uh, Nintendo has neither confirmed or denied that. So I'm sure it would. I'm actually not considering that how much hardware they're packing into that. But I mean, I guess it's possible. Technology does change every now and then. Probably would have right. made I mean, something specific for it. 
I guess it's not like the touch screens would take up a huge amount of room. I'm just thinking of more hardware to run that might slow it down. But yeah, I don't know. We'll find out. I'm looking forward to it. I just hope that it, it does really, really well and is living up to the hype because let's face it, this is the first time people have truly been hyped about a Nintendo console. At least since the Wii, maybe even the GameCube, because half the people hyped about the Wii weren't normal gaming people. Hmm. So, I I don't know. It it's uh, it's an interesting venture, and I think it's a lot more worthwhile than the Wii U, or even maybe the Wii itself is, as far as gaming goes. And some people are actually playing it off as a Nintendo's like last ditch effort, like. People are trying to claim that if the Switch fails, then like Nintendo is going to go bankrupt or something. I'm like, I don't, I don't know, know about that. But... Yeah, I don't know either. Nintendo's a little too big to fall at this point. Though they yeah, certainly can fall. I don't know if they're too fall. big to fail, but yeah. they're, they're definitely a tank. Oh, They've yeah. certainly suffered for worse, I think. But, as long so as yeah. They... Uh... Sorry, I was go, about go to ahead. say, as long as they don't go the way of Konami and... Uh... Go from video yeah. games to pachinko machines. I'm sure they'll be fine. Yeah. As long as they don't kick out their number one game designer at that point. Hint, hint. I'm totally not salty about this, I swear. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Konami kicked out Hideo Kojima. And yeah. Did they really? Yeah. And then they took his, they took Metal Gear Solid rights and just like, oh, hey, let's put this on a pachinko machine and then stick our investments in that and then whoop de doo So wow. literally every IP they had was put in a pachinko machine, and I don't know what they've done with it since. Huh. I was not aware of that. Happened a long time ago. Well, months ago. Maybe a year. They're dumb. Hmm. Anyway, we've reached an hour mark, so do we want to speed through the rest of this? Yeah, we probably should. Persona 5. Okay, it's a JRPG about kids in high school who gain powers to, to... I don't know how to explain this properly without, like, going on a long time, but... Do they go on into TV sets again and try uh, to that's hold Persona their That's Persona 4, but they go into different stuff depending on, like, the game. They go into different stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Persona, uh, where you go into things that you shouldn't be able to go into, <laughs> and then you do things that are JRPG. Pretty much, actually. It's Persona 4 was a JRPG effect. where you went inside a TV with your friends to save people who got thrown in there in the first place from being eaten by a thing that is basically yourself. And oh if you could overcome that self, then you gained a power called Persona. And that thing is basically a monster you summon to fight for you. Or cast spells for you because you can't cast spells yourself, you fucking lazy mage. Anyway. <laughs> lazy mage. Lazy mage. Persona 4 I had to go like through... A system. Persona 4 had to go through TVs. Uh, Persona 3, you had to go you into a mansion platter. that was basically your school. In Persona 5, you're going into people's hearts and stealing them somehow as if you're a thief. Oh my. Yeah. You're stealing something. Thing. Yes. It is coming out on Valentine's Day, February 14th, oh 2017. That's uh eh? That's not intentional at all. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the American version's coming out. It's already out in Japan, so literally Oh, is it real? Oh, yeah. I heard that it I was like, "Wait a minute, Persona 5 wasn't that out already?" It's already out in Japan, but not in the US or Europe. God damn it, Japan. <laughs> God damn it, Japan making good games and shit. I am looking forward to getting this uh it's on PlayStation 3 and 4, so if you're still behind on a generation, you can still play it. That's yeah. another console I want. I want, like, the 3 or the 4 for PlayStation so that I can get the backwards compatibility. I want the 4, but I can't afford anything anymore. But uh, the English voice cast has also already been announced as of October 19th. Names such as Xander Mobus from Smash Brothers, the recent Smash Brothers, actually. He was the announcer. So good to see from him again. And Matt Mercer, the voice of McCree from Overwatch, and many others, I'm sure, but I can't think of them at the time. Good to see from him again. Xander Mobus is the protagonist, 
So he doesn't get many voice lines in the game, but he does get, like, battle sounds. And... <laughs> not even that, just, like, shouting, Persona! And then, like, spell names or whatever. I'm kind of bummed that he doesn't... They, the main character doesn't actually get lines. It's like... It's like, you get a text box that asks you a choice, and then you choose it, and then that's it. And then people react to your choice, mm. and they get voice lines. Gotcha. But still cool if they, I like... Mean, it's... Sorry. Slightly less recording that you have to do because you'd have to record each and every choice. But I guess you'd still have to record each and every response. So, eh. well, they do have they have gone to like anime movies or like OVAs or short films or whatever using the original cast. Right. So Xander Mobus might get more roles to play later. That's cool. We also have for the rest of the cast we have Cassandra Morris. Max Middleman? Middleman? I, sorry, I'm, I'm butchering these names. Erica Harlatcher. Chirami Lee? Lay? Erica Lindbeck. Mm. Xantha Hune? Huin? And Robbie Damon. I'm sorry, I don't know you guys, but, uh. Really great to see that you're in the cast, dudes. And, dude, that's. <laughs> <laughs> what? I know, like, two people. I don't pay attention to the actors. It's like, somebody plays this role. Cool. Yeah, I don't know names at all. I wouldn't have known any of them. But, you know, hey, voice casts are cool. Oh, hell yeah. So I'm thinking we break to Old Man Henderson that we should have done a while ago. But, hey, you know, pacing. Yeah. Um, and I kind of would like to end with Night in the Woods because, oh, my God, Night in the Woods. And I'm excited. Can we do Night in the Woods very briefly? Why? Because I'd rather not go over an hour and a half. SoundCloud limitations should extend to YouTube limitations because uh, things. Yes. yes. Yeah, I know. SoundCloud's dumb. At least the back end is. We love the SoundCloud community. Just not the people running it. Anyway. Well, yeah. Night in the Woods actually doesn't have a lot of talking points. It's just a lot of cool information. So, it won't take long. Okay. But uh, last time for Old Man Henderson, we ended with the detective and his buddy uh, agreeing to work together to work for Old Man Henderson to find his lawn gnomes. And that evening, they went to the site and discovered the corpse of the Shaga. There wasn't enough left of it to force any sanity checks but plenty for them to start asking some very pointed questions about why the heck there was a monster here. The professor ended up on the list of people to look into when his when this body was identified, and then they found the page of the Necronomicon. Recognizing the occult symbols on it, the detective dropped it off at his office while he went to ask if he could borrow a notebook out of the cold case evidence lockers. Henderson, meanwhile, discovered that during a recent bender, he had a creed to chaperone a dance at the local high school. So he swings by the detective's office to let him know that that's where he'll be. So he's at the office and he meets Jim instead, asks him to pass along the information to Al, and then snags the scrap of the ne Necronomicon on the way out the door saying he, quote, needed paper. Jim fails to make the spot check to notice which sheet of paper he took. The GM probably fudged it, hoping and assuming that Henderson was going to read it and he could kill him off via sanity damage or something stupid like that. Boy, howdy, was he wrong. So Henderson shows up to the dance in his usual attire, slightly less scruffy than usual, and volunteers to sit outside and make sure punks from the other schools didn't try and gate crash the party. The more proper people were glad to keep him outside since that meant he wouldn't be able to corrupt the youth. Henderson was glad because there was no way they'd let him smoke the monster blunt he just rolled inside. <laughs> I then realized as he lit an Atomica, as he called it, a blunt roughly the size of a Cuban cigar, that there was currently one, only one piece of paper on his person. As soon as I found out where he was in character, I went to the school to try and prevent the inevitable. Meanwhile, Jimmy the jock kid was sitting outside sad because his girlfriend didn't come because she was too busy being a crazy cultist because if you don't remember she's a crazy cultist henderson decides to introduce him to the wonderful world of substance abuse and like a bro passes the blunt 
Oh god. To be totally honest, I'm surprised this moment didn't make the original story, since smoking the giant book of bad juju was the best thing to ever happen on accident. <laughs> <laughs> so Jimmy took a hit and totally failed every damn check the GM sent his way. He saw Jesus, and then Jesus turned into a giant squid thing. In the deep distance, the weeds softened the blow by masking everything behind a cartoony-eyed afterglow. <laughs> So imagine for a moment watching Elmer Fudd scream Cthulhu Factin! and shoot Daffy in the face, only instead of a fucked up beak and muttering of this means war, he screams HE COMES! and tentacles rip out of his form to molest the nearby wildlife. <laughs> this is the part where I had to go to the door and retrieve the precious shrimp fried rice that we had ordered previously, but I came back to So wait, I on only lost 15 sanity points, which you get about a hundred or so in a game, roughly speaking. So 15's a heavy blow. Because the lower that get shit gets, the crazier things become. Yeah, what now? I pass back the blunt. Henderson, of course, manages to ace all of the tests and then comments on how this is some really good shit, man. And how Jimmy is a, quote, lightweight. Jimmy then does a bit better, and they get to swapping stories. Pretty soon, the cult comes up, and they agree to join forces for the sake of cute girls next door and lawn gnomes everywhere. Sadly, that roach burned fast and hard, so when me and Al got there, all we saw was the crazy old fuck and some ginger-headed teenager crashed together against the wall, giggling at those silly squid things in people's heads. So, we then discover the kid's connection to the madness, and promptly discover what he knows. This leads to the three people who didn't have school tomorrow, both in and out of game, to prepare a stakeout of some church. So at this point, we all get into Jim's van, and park down the street from a church. The church happens to be on the end of a road, at a T-shaped intersection, and we're parked a bit up the way from it. Man, stakeouts are boring. No shit, Henderson. You have anything useful to contribute? Not really. I should have brought a book or something. Would you be paying attention to the building if you had reading material? Not really. Then I guess that would defeat the purpose of a stakeout, wouldn't it? Not if you two were watching. Hell, we could have two of us watching and the third man playing bait. You'd volunteer for that? Beats the fuck out of sitting in a van with two dudes who won't even let me smoke. Didn't you smoke evidence the last time you lit up? I regret nothing. Fuck it, you guys hungry or something? I'm gonna go grab some munchies from the gas station. Bring coffee. And some cheese doodles. Alright, back in. Fuck it, just leave the doors unlocked. And he went in search of snacks. When he hopped out of the van, one of the cultists happened to see him on a lucky roll, and as he walked around the corner into the gas station, they ran out and beat the shit out of the two that two of us that were left in the van. About the time we got dragged into the building, Henderson had finally got out of the bathroom. About the time we got tied to the altar, Henderson had stopped to try on hats at the gas station. About the time the ritual reached its height, Henderson was debating which ACDC album was the best with the cashier. The end result of that argument was that while they couldn't decide if Back in Black or Dirty Deeds was the best album, Black Ice was pretty boss and heralded only good. So then, some... With some tense tests of willpower and resolve, Al managed to free Jim and hold off the cultists while an evil presence steadily took chunks off his sanity score until he was no longer able to resist it. My smiling in malicious glee, Hastur began to stalk his new prey. At this point in time, Henderson had just walked out of the store, just in time to see my character get murder glomped by a monster wearing my friend's face. So he does the only logical thing he could. He stole a fucking fuel truck. So then we find out he was packing C4 and was making all sorts of tests while gunning it down the road towards us. He made it and bailed just in time for the truck to hit, hit Hestur off of me and run my ass over. Hestur rode that truck to its end while Henderson placed a call to Jimmy. Hey kid, Henderson here. Found out what the nasties are weak against. What's that, Mr. Henderson? Point blank annihilation. He then hangs up the phone and proceeds to walk off. I finished bleeding to death two turns later. That's right, this motherfucker let me to die. 
sure, it wasn't like I was screaming for help, but he could have at least checked. And since I'm not sure how familiar slash TG is with certain Cthulhu-based rulebooks, it was basically in what D&D calls alive with negative hit points. So I'm helpless, dying, but there's still hope because I could be revived. Until the back trail ignited and the tiny amount of fire damage ended me. My one consolation was that the fire blew up the gas station and took the bar he left me for with it. Then the detective's player, after the fastest re-roll of a character I've ever seen, entered stage left. William Broclaw runs in and yells about how his newly refurbished bar just got destroyed in the evening of its grand reopening. Hey man, if it makes you feel any better, I can help you get back at the people who did this. Who are you? Name's Henderson. This is my right-hand man, Rupert. And you know who did this? I'm fairly certain I do. Even ever hear of the Disciples of the Yellow King? Are you saying that this was done by cultists? Look, I'm not saying it was cultists. Re okay, but it was probably cultists. <laughs> Come on, your bar might be gone, but it's the only watering hole in town. Or it's not the only watering hole in town. Ever hear of a pub called Harry's? You look like you could use a drink. So at Harry's bar, he got filled in on what Henderson knew while getting a couple drinks, quote, on the house. I probably would have been there too, were I not slightly pissy about losing two characters in just as many sessions. So after a few minutes of back and forth, Will decides he'll get in on it if Henderson can provide some proof as to the whole evil cultist thing. So why'd you decide to go after them? Revenge, mostly. Really? What happened? Some bastard who blew up your bar killed two of my buddies. This after they stole my fucking lawn gnomes. Damn, tell you what, when we catch the guy, I'll hold hold him still while you kill him. Mighty generous of you. This was the point where we called it for the evening, and at the start of the next session, Henderson headed up a daring plan, quote-unquote, to kidnap one of the heads of the cult. I'll tell that one, that one next time, but quick spoiler, I managed to get three of my own characters killed in one session. Yeah, and that is the end of Director's Cut, Part two. Yay, the necro blunt. The necro blunt. Fucking love that little thing. There's a comic on the webpage too that shows. Yeah, it shows yeah. Daffy on it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a deer about to get butt raped by a tentacle. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Bambi. <laughs> yep, pretty sure. <laughs> it's a furry's dream come true. Yeah. At oh, least it's Bambi and Thumper. Or Flower. Is it Flower or Thumper? It's the rabbit. So, to wrap things up, as I said, Night in the Woods update, um, this actually comes as a boon to the fact that we had technical difficulties last week, um, because I didn't get this email until after the normal recording time, um, but it was the new update for Night in the Woods information. It had a huge chunk of information, but some really cool things in it. Some other information, I'll save the best news for last, is that Demon Tower that I mentioned previously, the mini game within Night in the Woods on May's laptop that you can play, it is in fact a fully fledged game within a game. And we discussed previously about how that can be a good thing and a bad thing and how sometimes uh, developers spend too much time, something that we didn't really ask for and the main game suffered because of it or something like that. Um, and sometimes where you, you know, it's great and you can sit there and play the stupid mini game for hours and hours and not actually make any progress in the real game. I found out the point of Demon Tower. Demon Tower was a stretch goal for the Kickstarter. So the reason Demon Tower exists is because they raised enough money to put it there. That's why it's there. So we did, in fact, actually ask for it. And <laughs> that's why it's there. So all qualms quelled. One of the other things to note is that the devs have kind of pointed out that they've actually in attempt to make sure that the game is as good as it can possibly be. Um, they've dipped into their own savings and pockets to buy extra help for the game to get it done, not only in a reasonable amount of time, but with quality work. A lot of that being a sound design there's a lot of sound effects um music transitional stuff lots of good stuff going on in the game sound wise as well as what they already had 
Uh, and a lot of that is actually a result not of the publisher that picked them up, known as Finji, or by the Kickstarter campaign, but by the devs actually pitching in and eating ramen, kind of an idea. Um, likewise, the devs have mentioned a lot of the fact that they are a very small team and they've been doing all these conventions um, by themselves, but this is all stuff that we've talked about before how they've really kind of done some amazing shit with their small team the game is getting close to being esrb rated uh the, oh, the, yeah. some of the some of the raiders are they either have the game or they're getting ready for it or something the team knows for sure that this is at least going to be a teen rated game uh because of some of the material it goes into but because of some of the material it goes into and the fact that it's not exactly a kid-friendly game and kid-friendly topics, uh, there's a decent chance it might actually get a mature rating. So uh, that could be interesting. I kind of like that it, it's, you know, it goes for adult themes, not in a sexual way, per se, um, but, like, it's got kind of like a dark lore kind of thing going on in some cases, and... You know, it talks about you know, poverty and classism and all sorts of these, you know, heavy hitting topics to some degree. So um, I wouldn't mind it, you know, I guess not pulling punches, if you will, that that yeah. would make it. But of course, if it's teen rated, it would theoretically by default reach a wider audience because people would be less put off by it, probably wondering why it's rated M. And I understand that. So I kind of hope whatever is best for the game happens. Kind of hoping that they can still hit anything that would make it immature, but it would still be a teen, if you know what I mean. I didn't intend for that to rhyme, but whatever. And for those wondering about the ESRB rating thing, you can check why it's rated the whatever rating it gets by looking at the box. Well, yeah, but that's only like a few phrases. It doesn't tell yeah. you like, you know, in scene seven, somebody kills a dude and it's pretty gory. Yeah, but you can at least see that falls it out. happens, but not know where it is. Like on screen death or something or sexual themes, yeah. or drug abuse. Or Honestly, I think it's the whatever. drug abuse that'll probably hit it because yeah. I know there's drinking in it. Yeah, that's T rating it maybe. Yeah, ish. It depends on how prominent it is. I originally didn't think I was going to be re able to release an image because I thought we were going to be doing the podcast the next day, but uh, we didn't. And so now I can release an image, which will be another thing that I put in the uh, description for this video. Um, along with that, there is planned new music, new content, and a new release trailer, completely new content, new, new music, background, all of it. Uh, release trailer should be releasing in the coming month or two um, because we have a release date. Yes. Um, and again, I didn't know if I was going to be able to actually say the release date, but the release date is in fact January 10th of 2017. And the reason for that is quite simple, is that they needed a few more weeks to uh, get the game polished and pretty much to the point where they think they could release it. The problem is, is a few weeks from now is the beginning of the major holiday season. So you get all of the nonsense that is already trying to be released during the holiday season, or rather prior to the holiday season. Then you have the actual holidays where you don't really want to release things on like Thanksgiving or Christmas because people have already bought their shit and there's so much going on during those times uh, just with people being with their families and you know national holidays and not being at work and all this kind of stuff that it just things don't sell well gaming wise during those times um, so before you know it uh, to kind of clear all the hurdles of other things already slated for release bigger things too probably uh, and the holidays themselves, you're into the new year. And that's why it's releasing in early 2017. But they did make a point to pick the 10th, where to the current knowledge, and hopefully it stays this way all the way to release, there is literally nothing else slated for release on January 10th. So it has officially been dubbed Night in the Woods Day. 
So January 10th, Night in the Woods. Fucking excited. Awesome. And with that, this has been the episode 24 IA podcast on November 1st, late in the day. We release it later, and dude, hit the button. No. I did that so fast, too. I know, but we have like four minutes. We can, we can prolong four the... minutes. We can ramble a little bit if we want. I, but I literally pretty much went out. Good stuff. Do you have another Pop Tart? No. I do want to make a corn dog, though. I want to order pizza. I made pizza last night. It was really good. I just need to. I really need like a mixing bowl so I can, like one of the actual mixers so I can make my own dough. I could theoretically roll it by, or like mix it by hand, but dough gets really tough once it starts being mixed, and I don't want to do that by hand. What topping should I get? You're gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna order pizza. I just nice. Wanna, I don't know what to get though. I'm either pepperoni. Or I mean, chicken. I judge. I judge pretty much every pizza shop by their meat lovers pizza, but um, uh, I have to get a one topping though for the deal I have. Oh, gotcha. I mean, you could always get more, and then it's just the price of a topping on top of your coupon. I I'd done that before. Or or you can get a half one topping and half the other topping. So the whole pizza is still one topping, but there's different toppings on different pieces. I don't think that's how that works for this particular place. I mean, it's how it works at literally every other pizza shop. So. I don't know. I'll give it a look. But pretty so sure if you get that like half pepperoni that. and half sausage, then that's all one topping and it still counts. What pizza shop are you ordering from? Um, Pizza Hut. We're going to get sponsors up in this bitch. Uh, I'm probably going to put a cat They can totally do that. Huh? That's fine. Uh, okay. Um, and yeah, no, totally does that. I do it all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I'm I gonna have like to check that. I feel like that's gonna be the best sensor ever. <laughs> yeah, <Meow! laughs> does that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I also just provided your sound bite. Uh, I still have that other cat yelling though. True. I had to find that somewhere. I forget where it was. I don't know. It's Creative Commons Zero, so I don't have to credit it because I forget who who did it. Yay for public domain! So, yeah, you should totally do that, and I still say meat lovers, but you could do the classic pepperoni and sausage, or um, chicken would be good. Chicken is a premium topping at most places, though. Chicken Fair is warning. nice, I like it. So that's still going to be more than your coupon deal. Actually, it's the $5 thing, and oh, really? that still wow. counts as the one topping. Yeah, so. it does. Alright, fair enough. Alright, I am hungry, and we've probably made everyone else hungry, so... Yep. Bye, podcast. Get food. Get crunk, not crunk. Get food crunk. Yes, get food, get very food crunk. Food crunk is the best. Pull the lever, crunk! Pull the lever!